Welcome to a new video about Git. And today we are going to see how to use a Git remote repository using the GitHub platform. In this video, we are going to create a local repository. And after we have a commit with the defined code, we have one stable version. We are going to send this repository to a remote server that will be in GitHub. Once it's there, we are going to see the process to download this project by another developer, to send updates, and how to receive these updates by another developer, and eventually handle conflicts that could happen when multiple developers are working together in the same project. Okay, so first step, let's create one local repository on Git. So here we have GitHub, and then I'm using here the Visual Studio platform to assist us in the, um, in the Git commands execution, but you could use any other prompt tool to help you in this process. So here I have a project, it's empty, it's not even a, a Git repository project, so we are going to start from zero. Okay, new terminal, then we have here access to the command prompt. As you can see, if we type here git status, it's not a git repository. We need to init that with git init. And now it's initialized as a git repository and it then is being controlled by git. Right, so let's create just a simple file here. Okay, new file for this project. It will be my my file dot anything like dot js so we have now one untracked file in our git repository you can see that with git status and here it's untracked so now let's let's suppose it's okay and we are going to commit this change so basically what we have to do git add to add out changes we have uh, done git commit Then the message and then here it's done and think okay now we have a red one repository that has a log of the history of commits and then let's suppose it's okay and i want to send this to a remote repository so now the next step of this video let's create a remote repository on github this is what you have to do first of all you have to create one account here in our github and then once you are in your account you could ask to create a new repository let me see if i can go to the initial screen of this stuff here github okay here's my profile and here i have this new button to create a new git repository okay we create it here now and then just give it here a name like uh, my git repo it's okay it's okay it's name no description it's public no problem and okay let's create that look as soon as we have created the remote repository it's empty and then git help us with two forms or three forms to update code inside the repository or we could uh, create from zero and send to 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 GitHub, or we could push one existing project. That's our case. Okay, as you can see here, I open that in a new tab, and then uh, Git identifies it's empty. Its repository is empty. There is no branch here. There is nothing. So it always opens this screen. So our case is one. We have one existing repository. That's our local repository that's here. So I'm going to send this file. I will even um, add here some content. My content. Or it's a JS, so I could just define a variable here, variable x, receive here a value, and then everything's fine. I will just again update this change and commit that in our repository. Okay, it's done again. Now we are going to send that to, to the remote. As we can see here directly in Git repository, um, you have here 
the um, we need to, to make a link between our local repository and this remote remote repository. This URL of the remote repository was defined when we create here this repository. So this line will link our local repository with the remote one. You can test that in the following way. If you do here the command git remote, it prints nothing because there is no remote linked to your local repository. Now, if we execute this remote add origin and, and then the URL we have just copied, it then adds. And now if you type again, git remote, now it's linked to the remote repository. And now we have um, freedom to send our current branch to, to GitHub. But let, let me clear that. And then we are going to test that together. Um, here, if you use git status, it's saying I'm on ma master. And then git propose, we execute git, git branch minus n main. This instruction will rename our current branch to main. And then once renaming that, it's going to send this branch with git push. Git push is to make upload of a certain branch to remote. Uh, but I don't want to rename my branch. I don't want it to be named main. I want it to be master, for, for example. And then I'm going to execute exactly this one, but with master branch instead of main. Of course, you could just execute this tree together, but I'm here explain to you step by step, then you can know what exactly each instruction does. Okay, so now this command here and then master let me see what is going to happen. Okay, it's executing the same thing. It looks like it has created a new branch in the repository. Let's test that together. Okay. And as you can see here, our chains we have just done together now is already here online and public available in our console. So here we finished the first part of the video that is making the link between a local repository and a remote repository and making everything can working together. Now let's go to another example. Let's suppose we have a second developer that work in the project with us and want to work also here. It's important because of the following situation. When we are alone, we can then come here and then we could add here another variable, another variable, change the, uh, give a value to that, and everything will work fine. We are going to commit this change here. Let me just commit that again. Do you see how easy it is to do that? Let me just do here commit. Okay, and now after we have commit, we can just send the updates. Do you see here? I have committed. Here we have a second line but it's still not, it's still not in, in GitHub because I have not sent that to the remote. To send our changes to the remote, we have to use the push command. And then now it's just came here and use push. When then push, what happens? We send our changes to remote. And once it's done, okay, it has uploaded the changes. And now you can see here, we have that pusher. So it's very easy to work when we are alone. Just change, commit, and send the, the updates with push. And then this remote repository will look like a backup of your version and is available to another. But it's avail available to another, then another developer could work with that as well. So now let's simulate. I am now a second developer and I want to work in the project as well. Here I have already created a second a second directory that's empty right now. Let me just here open folder. Let me go to my desktop where it is. And here I'm, I am now the developer B. And then I am as developer B, as you can see here, I am in a directory that's not a Git repository. As you can see here, Git status, it say no, it's not a, a Git repository. So what I have to do to start to work in the project with the another developer? Basically, I have to do the following. Here we are in the project. And then 
when we are in the main page of the, the repository, um, GitHub gives to us already the URL to clone this repository. So just copy the URL and then execute git clone statement, and then it will download the whole code and be available to be developed as well. So take a look here. Uh, now, supposing I'm another developer, I'm here in a directory that's not controlled by Git, and then here I execute git git clone, and then the URL. What happens now? It downloads the whole code, and now we are linked. We are linked to to GitHub. And let's suppose that I am uh, the new developer. Discover that X has not to has the value of five, but has to have the value of seven. And then we save that and say now I have to update the code. We have to update that as well. So the same thing. We need to add the changes to the staged area, and then we have to. Oops. Ah, okay, okay. When we, we when we then clone, actually we have created a subdirectory to the project. So we have to enter in the sub subdirectory, and here then I execute the git add, and then the git commit. Okay, like change x value. Okay, it's done, but it is local. To send this change to remote, we need to use the git push. Git push always send, send the uploads of our commits to the remote. Now the uploads is being done. We just wait that it has executed. And now, as you can see here, this file, let me open that again. It has the value of seven. It has updated by the second developer. But what happens with the first developer? I am, as the first developer, uh, if I open here my, my project, um, I don't know it was changed by another developer. I don't know that. And then my file has the value of five. So I could then continue to update the file and say that now we have this Z variable that has a value of 10 and that actually Y has to have the value of nine. And okay, I'm going to commit that. So I'm doing the whole process again, add the change to the staged area, commit the change, and now I want to send that to GitHub. But what happened when I'm going to do push? Let's wait and see the output. One error. You see here, one error. It's like the same error we receive when we do the git merge. Because, because two files were changed by different people and there are some conflicts that could not be automatically uh, resolved, okay? So what it says, um, I, I'm not updated with the code and it suggests us to execute the git pull and then we try to do another push. Git pull will download the code that we have remote, that then the idea is before I'm trying to push something, I need to pull the current changes, resolve the conflicts, and when I am resolved with the conflicts I have with the grant we are linked to, then we then we do a new push. Then it's what we're going to do now to, to resolve this conflict. I'm going to execute here the command git pull. Git pull make the download of the chains, and here what you see, one conflict um, identified, then we need to manually resolve that. Basically here, the first developer has changed, the second developer has changed the value from X to, from five to, to seven, then I reset has changed, which is going to be seven as well. Now I'm going to delete this part here, going to delete this part here as well, save that. And then now I have, um, how can I say, have I handled the, the conflicts? I'm going to try a new update. Then I need now to do another commit of this change. I have done. Okay, it's com we have committed that. And now we are going to try again to send that with push to the remote. And now we have resolved the conflicts. It has then worked. And then now if you, we open GitHub and try to see here the current code, now we have updated with what we have done. 
So it was the goal of this video to show to you how to work uh, with your Git repository that you have created locally and how to link that with a remote repository and how to link and work, work together with that, sending updates, downloading updates, and also handling conflicts that could have happened when different people work in the same file in, in the same moment. Okay, the codes we have executed in this video will be available below in the video description. I thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.